So here's a little brief summary of what we've learned so far. I'm just out of my, I'm going to interpolate from my own slides. Since the beginning, models were magical. Regulators were concerned about fairness and measurability. Uh, models offer promise, but a lot of confusion. They're not always clearly understood. And regulating has always lagged behind the prevalence of their use. And this is one of the reasons why it, it was so difficult to, for, for us to know what we could do with these models and, and you know, how we could develop and deploy them. Multiple attempts were uh, made to regulate these things properly, and they're catching up now, but they're still lagging. And then with the big debacle a few years ago, I mean, that all of this becomes even more and more important. But Dems to rules, that's the way we got to play, okay? Models offered promise, but lots of confusion, too. We started using models for all sorts of different things. Uh, consumers started asking a lot of questions, and, you know, things that, that we used to say, I, I mean, it used to great on you, but customers would call any, oh, well, you didn't score high enough. Nobody knew what that meant, and the customers got, you know, pretty un unhappy. We always wanted to talk to the manager because nobody could really explain, you know, they, they, they had deployed these models without the forethought of what, what, what effect it's going to have on the customers, okay? So, but the good news was that in, in the earlier days, time was that models were actually pretty straightforward. The types of credit scoring models that were being used were pretty straightforward. They could be very easily rendered. You just kind of added up the points, and if there were enough points, you passed the cutoff, you were approved. And yet, even though these models were being used, people were still not really explaining them. And then we started using models for all kinds of different things. Once we started getting the taste of this, this nectar of the gods, you know, we, we started using them for everything. Credit extensions, solicitation, line authorizations, behavior scoring, reissue, uh, severe collection and recovery stuff. And in the earlier days, um, for all of these functions like new, oh, I'm sorry, that's right, I forgot, I can do this. New account scoring, solicitation, the, the data was fairly rudimentary, right? We had, in the very beginning, we had application and credit bureau data, okay? And, and the credit bureau data in those days consisted of what was your worst rating, how many satisfactories do you have, and how long have you been on the books, basically. You know, two or three characteristics were all that anybody was really looking at because, first of all, the credit bureaus in the 80s and 90s were not nearly so sophisticated as they are now, and they weren't even capturing uh, consistently all of this different type of data, right? So we used what we had. And uh, then when they started doing solicitation scoring, at the same time, the bureaus were all evolving and we were starting to get more uh, data that was a lot better, uh, a lot more robust in the credit reporting agency. So we were able to start using those. But then when we started doing line authorizations and cross-selling and behavior scoring stuff, then we started bringing in master file, purchase data, uh, payment and loan details, all of these things started to be able to be incorporated into the models and then, uh, and then, okay, I'm sorry, so that, that was sort of how, what, what we were starting to do with the models. But consumers started asking a lot of questions, okay, and they wanted to know, why did I get this loan amount? Why was I turned down? Why didn't you renew my credit line? And then sometimes customers would call in and they would say, well, I pay you every month. I know I'm five days late every month. But that's when I get paid. But why did you call me? Why did you call me for a payment? They get pissed off and they leave. And again, you, you didn't score enough, just didn't cut it. Loan officers didn't get it. The customers didn't get it. And the tin woodsman didn't get it. And he had an ax. So now look where we are. And, and not to mention where we're going. Now we've got fraud, attrition, cross-sell, utilization, propensity, operational models. We're building models to do everything in financial services. I, I'm speaking specifically there, but of course this is, this is apl applicable to, to so many different sectors. And we're no longer using this basic rudimentary information. I mean, we've got web logs, transactional databases, historical time series, 
internal systems, DDA, collection, recovery, financials. We're, we're incorporating financials into our models now. And we're putting it in all of these data marts and these data warehouses. And the data has gotten so big and it's getting so much bigger that all of these interesting new kinds of tools had to be developed to start being able to access the bigger and the bigger and the more robust and the, you know, the expansive amounts of data that were going on, not to mention the different functionality that we're trying to incorporate it in all of the business decisions that we're starting to make now. We're, we're, we're modeling so many of the decisions that we used to do judgmentally. So I'll mention a couple of these things. Oh, look, there's CART and TreeNet. Hmm. Uh, and of course, there are some competing tools there too. But models offered promise with a lot of confusion. This was one of my favorite quotes from The Wizard of Oz. I don't know if you see that. Some people without brains do an awful lot of talking, don't they? Because he realized he had this epiphany. Okay, so now I ask this question. Probably how many people in the room are formally trained in statistics, mathematics, that sort of thing? Just almost everybody, okay. So yeah, then the question becomes, how are you gonna keep them down on the farm, okay? All of those, those of us who do have these, this formal education uh, in all of this stuff, I mean, you're learning new methodologies all the time. Right? There's all these new, new ways of doing things, new ways of looking at data, approaching data uh, manipulation problems, but only a very small number of these learned methodologies can actually be used in business scenarios. So what good is it? Well, it's actually quite a bit of good. It was a rhetorical question, but it was an anti-rhetorical question. 